Today we're going to be discussing SAP Orders to Cash Accelerator from Click. We're going to be talking about how we extract SAP into Redshift. We're going to be talking about the components that we cover from Click that it covers data ingestion, data warehouse automation, and analytics. Uh, my name is David Frerix, and later on we'll be joined from Dalton Ruhr, and we're on the Click Partner Engineering team. So before we get into the demo of the accelerator, let's talk a little bit about what the orders to cash process is. So very simply, the process of orders to cash is a customer sells a thing, that thing then gets scheduled, that thing gets pulled out of inventory, that thing gets delivered, uh, a customer gets billed for the thing, and the company gets paid for selling the thing. So that's the orders to cash process in, in a nutshell. Now, the complexity of this comes from an SAP world that these are all independent business processes, and so it's very difficult to be able to understand how they all relate to each other. I have sales items, I have billing documents, I have open orders, I have delivery items, I have all of these entities in different individual facets. So what we've done from Click is to pull that together. For example, here's what it takes to pull out that orders to cash information in SAP, all these different screens to get that visibility. Now what we've done in Click is make it easier. We can actually see all of the flow and transformations of a document from creation through completion in a single screen, as well as all the other analytics related to orders to cash. So how does this relate to AWS? So we're able to provide this entire platform on the AWS uh, technology. We're going to le leverage uh, Amazon Redshift as our data warehouse. We're going to be able to use things like Kafka or SageMaker to be able to do machine learning as well as uh, streaming real time. But all of the data replication, the data warehouse automation and data mart creation are managed by the Click Data Ingestion tools. The analytics are provided by ClickSense. And then we have some other capabilities for doing cataloging, for doing alerting, for doing chatbotting that also can help uh, expand this use case to more users. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the demo of Orders to Cash in Action. So we're going to go ahead and start out here in Click Com Replicate, and what we're going to take a look at is how we're going and sourcing the data from our SAP system and landing it into Redshift. Now what's important to understand about this is that what we are doing, as mentioned on the previous slide, is we're going to take advantage of using the SAP extractor. So we're not going at the base tables, we're not going at um, any of those objects that are at the lower level, we're going to be using these SAP extractors that have been enabled by Click Gold Client. So with that, we are just grabbing these extractors that we need uh, to be able to source the data for billing and for sales items and order status and delivery status and all these different entities uh, and extract them out and land them in Replicate. So this process of replication uh, is, is very straightforward and you can see here we're connecting up to SAP system. We're writing the data out into Redshift, and that's really all we're doing in this stage. Uh, we're applying a, a few global transforms to make sure that the data is uh, in, in best format for Redshift to use, and, and that's it. So this is the process of replicating the data out of SAP using the extractors and landing it into Redshift. Now, this is when we pivot into the data warehouse automation component. And this is using Click Compose. <clears throat> and what we're going to do here in Click Compose is we take that landed data in Redshift, and now we go through the process of modeling it and adding the value. So we can see that we have those same tables that were loaded out of uh, SAP into Redshift. However, what you're going to see, instead of five-digit shorthand German codes, which is what comes out by default, we've actually, in this model, added all of the friendly names. Uh, so you can see now that if we're looking at ERDAT, it's called created on underscore ERDAT. So we do persist the technical names along with adding in the business friendly names. So we actually have a process that does that inside of Compose. We then go and start the process of modeling the relationships. How does data flow through the system? How do we get from these fact tables? How do they relate to the dimensionality? How do they relate to sales item uh, header status, item detail status, uh, things of that nature? So all of that is modeled here in this Compose model that we show the flow of the data. And by doing this modeling, this is how the surrogates are created, the keys are created. We define what entities are uh, 
uh, you know, hubs for managing the data vault style warehouse. And at the end of the day, what we do is we create uh, these, these warehouses. And we don't only just create them, we actually do all of the SQL management for the system. So we create all of the scripts to automate, to create, to reload, to handle the slowly changing dimensions. That is all managed by Compose. And at the end of the day, now that we have this Data Vault style warehouse, we go build the information to actually go deliver this to the end user. And we do that by delivering two types of data marts. So we deliver what we call transactional data marts. And these data marts are written uh, with all of the details in the fact table at the lowest level. And they're sort of what you would expect from a info cube. They're by subject area. So we have sales order lines, schedule, billing, shipment, open orders, etc. Now we have taken the additional step that there may be use cases where you aren't going to use ClickSense as your front end. So we've gone ahead and created aggregate data marts. And these aggregate data marts have pre-calculated the KPIs for orders to cash, total discount amount, total order quantity, things of that nature. So we're providing both these aggregated data marts for uh, you know, more of your basic SQL tools, as well as the transactional marts for being able to leverage with quick click. So let's go ahead now, and I'm going to pass this over to my friend Dalton, who's going to walk you through the analytics side of what we've done in this Compose model. Thank you for setting the ball on the tee for me, Dave. I appreciate that great demonstration of how Click moves data from raw to being analytics ready. And of course, analytics can mean a number of things to different people. Perhaps for executives, all they want to do is use our Insight Advisor chat and ask a question. What is my DSO? They'll get their answer, they'll close up, and they'll go home. They know what they're dealing with. They know whether it's good or bad. They might want to dig in more. Others like me that are hardcore analysts want to dig in deep. And we're going to give you that ability with this accelerator. I can look at a number of KPIs across this entire work stream, the entire order to cash process. I can look and see what my trend is for on-time deliveries and I can see, wow, we are really, really falling off the edge of the map here with our deliveries. That is something that we need to do, but ooh, man, as the revenue cycle director, I am really particularly nervous about the fact that our day sales outstanding is creeping so high year over year, and I might want to dig in and analyze that. So I would want to go ahead and click on this details button so that I can see days out sales outstanding by this dimension. Instead of looking at by sales district, maybe I'm going to focus at a, at a larger global level by country. And I can see that Germany is the country where I have customers that have the longest sales outstanding and I might want to drill into that. So I would simply select Germany and I would move to another tab that has more information that could break that down. Of course, with click, all of your selections carry through all of your screens. And so I can now further look at DSO and I can see that I can break this out by, you know, your typical buckets, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe what I want to do is focus on just those that are 180 days or greater. And now I can see by customer which customers have these. Is this a process? Was this a one-time thing? Um, or is this a typical pattern for them? And of course, I can interact with any type of click chart. And I might want to do, continue now doing some research. And I want to dig into the details behind those customers and I've got every single line there that I want to look at. Well, let's go ahead and clear this because there's something else uh, that I think is really important to understand. With Click's associative model, all of your data marks, all of the details are loaded into memory so that I could analyze anything I wanted to even at the lowest level. Let's imagine that somebody's called me on the phone and says they want some details about a specific sales document. In SAP terms, that's a V billing. So they give me the number that they're looking for. I can find that number through the search. 
and I can select that one low-level document. I can see that there were two billing documents for it, and I can visualize the entire flow for that thing through my orders to cash process. And of course, I can see all the low-level details about that sales document and each of the billing documents for it.